Welcome back to Den with Depression. I'm in the van on a trip right now, but I wanted to make a video. Uh, so the van video will be coming out soon, but there's a topic that I kind of wanted to talk about, and that was um, depression and kind of the cure for depression, if you will. So all the leading science right now is saying that the only way to quote unquote cure depression with the least negative side effects uh, is meditation and mindfulness. So that got me kind of thinking that if you're able to actually change your brain's chemistry and the communication in your brain through meditation and mindfulness, what other things could you change? So it got me thinking and depression essentially is having negative feelings about your life if you want to like break it down it's hopelessness and loneliness and fear and inadequacy and all of those things that are ultimately feelings and in a lot of mindfulness practice when you're having those negative feelings um People will tell you there's no such thing as bad feelings or good feelings, they're just feelings. But when you're having those negative feelings, mindfulness really wants you to sit with those feelings instead of trying to get rid of them and really feel them and they will just go away. Feelings are temporary and they say the average length of a feeling is about 20 minutes. But the problem is when you're depressed, you try and push away the feeling. So if you think about it like a uh, beach ball or something, uh, if you have a beach ball in a swimming pool and you're trying to push down the feeling, so you're trying to push down the beach ball underwater, the beach ball is gonna pop back up with more force than it originally had. So the beach ball is whatever negative feeling you're feeling and you're trying to push it down or push it away and it pops back up with more force than it originally had. So the whole mindfulness thing is saying that if you sit with that feeling, feel the feeling out, uh, breathe and do whatever meditation you're doing and just let that feeling exist without pushing it away, that the feeling will naturally go away. And so I started thinking if that could work for depression and anxiety, could it also work for maybe obesity? Uh, cravings and things like that are also feelings. So if you're craving a certain type of food, could you practice mindfulness until your craving disappeared? Also, a lot of uh, overeating and things like that are uh, can be caused from emotional eating and so you're in an emotional state and you eat because it triggers uh, positive things in your brain to counteract the negative feelings that you're having so one could we practice mindfulness and meditation to allow that feeling to exist and to disappear on its own before we had to eat to get rid of the feeling and then two if we have uh, the craving to eat to fix the feeling could we also sit with that craving and possibly meditate our way out of that as well and let the craving disappear so a cool kind of mindfulness thing that they do a lot in therapy is mindfully eating a raisin so you take a raisin and you smell the raisin and you look at the raisin and you listen to the raisin and all of these things and then you finally eat the raisin and you appreciate the raisin so much more. So that's kind of step one. Uh, step two is working on cravings a little bit. And so if you think about your favorite piece of candy, so you hold your favorite piece of candy in your hand and you touch your favorite piece of candy and you look at it and your mouth starts to water and you kind of hear it crinkling and you can hear it and look at it and see it and then you can unwrap it and you can smell your favorite candy and eventually you'll start to crave that candy right because you have it it's your favorite you want it so bad but then if you sit with it and you keep looking at it and you keep 
practicing those mindfulness skills, eventually the craving will go away for that piece of candy or it'll be, the craving will be less and you'll have less desire for that piece of candy. So that's kind of step two. And then uh, step three is kind of if you have like an itch and you think about that itch and you separate yourself from the itch. So you are not the itch, but you have the feeling of itchiness that you want to scratch your arm or whatever. So instead of focusing on getting rid of the itch, you accept the itch that your arm has an itch and you'd like to scratch it, but instead of scratching it, you're just gonna let the itch be and eventually it'll go away. So step three and then step four is kind of working with your feelings when you're in the moment. Uh, so if you have anger, really sitting with that feeling of anger, why am I actually angry? What deeper feeling am I feeling? What caused this emotion? And kind of just sitting and being with it instead of trying to get rid of it or do something to cover it up. And that brought me to thinking about how we always try and get rid of negative feelings, but what if when you were happy, you tried to get rid of your happiness the same way that you would try and get rid of maybe the feeling of depression or hopelessness or loneliness? Could you, in a happy, positive feeling, could you sit with that happiness and let it go away? Or if you actually tried to push away the happiness like you were pushing away loneliness, would the happiness actually last longer? So I'm not really sure on that one, but those are just some things I've been thinking about. Uh, you can let me know in the comment section what you guys think, if you've ever done any of those four skills that I just mentioned, and if you think mindfulness and meditation can really be a cure for some of these um, issues that we struggle with. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time on Done With Depression.